Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, today we're going to take yet another item, make it look like a million bucks for pennies. Stay tuned. So y'all, today we're going to take this plain spiral notebook and we're going to put a pretty dress on it. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new subscribers and to all of my new friends. Welcome back to all of my longtime subscribers and longtime friends. Thank you all so much for hanging in there with me, for supporting my channel, for just being you. So whenever back to school shopping starts, I take advantage of those sales and I stock up on composition books and notebooks and things like that. So last back to school season, I was able to get these for 25 cents. That's one of those things that you might want to pay attention to. Even if you don't have kids in school, there are a lot of items that go on sale during back to school season that we can use in our crafting. This is one of them. So we're going to take this and we're going to turn it into this. I'm going to give you a closer look at this frosted covered notebook in just a minute. But y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. So this is the notebook that we're going to be covering today. It is 70 sheets and it's 8 by 10 and a half. I've already covered one and I think that it turned out beautifully. It was so inexpensive to do, but it really stepped up the game of this plain old notebook. When you put a pretty dress on anything, you can't help but improve it. And that's what we did here. So you know how when you go into a store and you see those frosted covered notebooks and they cost a whole lot? Well, I'm going to show you how to get that frosted look, add it to your notebook, and turn it into this beautiful, beautiful little work of art. So I have my frosted cover. Then when you open it, I have this page, which is some beautiful gold foiled paper. Then when you open the inside, I have the inside covered. I have added a little pocket here. And then behind that pocket, I created another pocket so that we can tuck in all types of goodies if we want. Then to create my tabs, I use just the regular pretty paper and I cut it to put it on the end to create tabs. And the way that I was able to get that tab look is that I took my paper and I trimmed three quarters of an inch off of the paper. So here's what we're going to need to make this. So I have my notebook. It's a green. We probably wouldn't want to carry it like this because that's not what we do. That's not how we roll. We want it to be pretty. Then I have my frosted piece that I've already pre-cut. I have a piece that is three by 10 and a half. The number of these pieces will depend on the number of tabs that you want to add to your book. So I'm going to show you how to place one tab, but if you want four tabs, you just cut four pieces at three by 10 and a half. Then I have my outside and inside liner pieces that measure seven and three quarters by 10 and a half. And then I have the pocket and this measures nine and a half by 12. Isn't that pretty? So to get that frosted look on the cheap, I am using the Dollar Tree flexible cutting mats. They come in this frosted color, so they're perfect for this project. And they're very water resistant on the outside. So if you don't have access to a Dollar Tree or you don't have access to those flexible cutting mats, you can use acetate, you can use window film. There are a whole bunch of different ways to get this look. Just play around with what you have available in your area and substitute it for the cutting mat. So my cutting mat piece is cut exact at eight by 10 and a half. All right, y'all, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to remove the spiral binding. You don't want to damage this because we're going to reinsert it. It comes out very easily. Each end piece has a little loop on it, so I'm just going to open that loop with my little needle nose pliers. And then I'll just take my needle nose pliers and go in and trim off a portion. I'm not trimming off all of it because remember, we still need to use this. So I'm going in and I'm snipping off the end piece. And then we just do the same thing down here. I just need to go in, grab that little end piece there, and I'm just going to snip off that portion. And then I'll just curl this back a little bit. So now to remove your spiral binding, 
you just need to start twisting counterclockwise and it'll come out all right y'all so we're getting to the end and you can see how easily the spiral wants to come out and there it is and we just set it to the side so now I'm going to bring in one of the pieces that measures seven and three quarters by ten and a half. And I am just going to add tape to the back, making sure that I have tape covering my edges. And now I'll go ahead and add tape to the rest of this and I'll be right back. All right, so I have my tape. I'm going to peel away the tape backers and then we're going to put this down. And when I put this down, I'm going to put it down starting from this end because when I cut it, I cut it a little bit short so that it wouldn't overlap the holes that are there. So I'm going to take this piece and starting at the end that does not have the spiral, I'm just going to place it down. And already you can see that we have a beautiful little cover on this. So now we're going to bring in the frosted cover and on the Dollar Tree placemats you have a smooth side and then you have a side that's sort of matted and rough. I want that to be the outside. So I want the matted side to be on the outside and I'm just going to place it down like this. And then I'm going to use these clips to hold everything in place. And I'll place one right there. And I'm doing this because I need to punch holes from here to here. I need to punch holes everywhere there is a hole. Two ways of doing it. I can do it with my paper punch. I'm not going to do that. I am going to do it using my piercer. So if you don't have a paper punch, you can do it this way. So all we need to do is find our holes and just go in and punch a hole like that. And we do this everywhere that we have a hole. And I actually found that this way works best for me. So I am just punching my holes and I'll go ahead and punch the rest of these holes and then I'll be right back. All right, y'all, so I'm about to punch my last three holes and this went pretty quickly using the piercer. And one thing I noticed when I was punching the holes is that I have some frosted cover overhanging here and I need to go ahead and just cut that away so that we have a nice even cover on this. So I am just trimming away that extra frosted cover. So now I can remove my clips and I can bring this back in and I'm not doing anything to the back page. I'll bring it back in. My holes will be nice and aligned and this is what we're going to have. Isn't that beautiful already? So remember when I said on this one, I reduced the paper size so that I could insert my tabs. That is something that you can do as well. And I'll show you the process for doing this. So I'm going to take my clips and I'm going to place my clips on like that. Then all I need to do is find the three quarter mark and make a mark right here and just keep finding that three quarter point and make a mark. And these marks are just your cut guides. So I'll just keep lining it up at three quarters of an inch. Make my mark here. Then I can take my ruler and place it down. And with a very sharp blade, just start cutting through. Whether you're using a box cutter, an X-Acto knife, or a finger blade, you need a fresh, sharp blade to be able to cut through without having your ends curl. So then once you have your pages cut, remember cutting the pages is optional. But if you want to cut them, once you have them cut, we are now ready to put the book together. So I am just going to put it back in its natural state. I'm going to take my clip, 
place my clip there, take my clip, place my clip right there. And then all we have to do is take the end of your wire binding, put it through that first hole, and then just start rewinding it through the holes. Sometimes this part will go very quickly and sometimes you have to help guide it into the hole just a little bit like I'm doing here. And you just keep doing this until your wire is through every hole in your bar. Alright y'all, I'm going through my last hole. And when I wind it through, I want to make sure that on each end I have a little tail of spiral. Because now we're going to take that spiral tail and I'm going to use my needle nose pliers just to grab that tail and curl it under so that whoever has this won't get their hands nipped or pinched by protruding metal. So y'all, there it is. That is how easy it is to put that frosted covering on the front. And look at how beautiful that is. So we're going to open this and I'm going to place down an inside piece. And this piece measures seven and three quarters by 10 and a half. So I'm just going to add some tape and I'll be right back. So now I'll just peel away my tape backers and we'll place down this inside piece. So when I place it down, I'm going to place it down so that I am fairly close to the spine. And there, I think that that is very pretty. I'm not doing anything to the back, but you can add covers to the back if you like. I like the way that this looks. So now I'm going to go ahead and make the pocket and this piece measures nine and a half by 12. So on the 12 inch side, I'm going to score at four and a half and at nine and one eighth. Then I'm going to rotate it. Then I'll rotate it to the nine and a half inch side and score at one and score at eight and a half. Then we are going to fold and burnish all of our scores. And now everywhere that I have a score, I'm going to angle in to go ahead and free the center tab. Let's do the same thing here. So we have freed the center tab. Now we want to remove these end pieces. So I will angle in here and remove these pieces from the top and the bottom. Now I'm going to take my scissors and just round the ends. This is just something that I like to do. It's not one of those things that you have to do. And if you have a corner rounder, you can use that corner rounder to get that rounded look. So now we're going to put the envelope together. I'll put a little bit of glue there, a little bit of glue there. And then on the widest end, that's the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and take some glue and put it on the edge. And now I can take this and fold up. Use my big old spatula to get that nice and stuck. Then I'm going to take a Velcro dot and that's how we're going to close this. So I'll put the Velcro dot right there and just rub my fingers against it, which helps to release that backer sheet. And we'll fold over, get that nice and stuck. And I can open it and make sure that I have it stuck. So we're going to take this and when I put it down, I'm just going to run my glue along the two side edges and then along the bottom edge. This is going to allow me to have a pocket behind the pocket. So we'll take this piece and I'm going to put it right there like that. Get that nice and stuck. And then I'll show you how I did my tab. So 
I'll take the piece that measures three by ten and a half, and we're going to score at one and a half. Then I'll just take my tape runner. You can use double stick tape if you want, but I'm going to use my double sided tape runner instead of my tear tape. And I'm placing tape on this piece, just making sure that I get coverage on that edge. So now on whichever page I want to add a tab, I am just going to take my book, open it like this, then I'll take this piece and when I put it down, I'm going to put it down, I'm going in about one and a quarter inch and I'll place it down like that and then I'll just fold it like this. So now when you open the book, you can see that my tab is longer than the paper but not longer than the book jacket. So this gives me a nice way of knowing which area I might have something placed or serve as a divider when I'm dividing the book. So now I'm just going to add some decorative touches. I have these little corner pieces. They're just paper, but they are gold foiled. So I am just going to add some glue. Take one piece, place it here in this corner. Just gives it a more upscale look when you add these little pieces like this. I'll take this piece and we'll put it in this corner. We only need two. Get that nice and straight. Then I have this little piece here that I'm just going to put down. It says life is great. I'm not even going to add a backer to it because I really want to keep this simple. So I'm adding some glue. Take this piece, we'll place it right there. You can even put a monogram there. It doesn't have to be a word saying. So this is how it looks so far. We can open this and just have this cover here. Then we open the inside. I have some stickers, so I am going to be putting one down. And I like the one that says, ordinary people can do extraordinary things. And I believe that. And so I'm going to place that there. Then I'm just going to place one over here. And y'all, it is completely up to you how you decorate, but I am just going to add a few stickers to give you an idea of how you can use this book, not only to take notes, boy, what a beautiful notebook this would be in a staff meeting, but to be able to use this as a journal also if you wanted to. So I'm going to take these stickers and just place them right there on the inside. And then I'll just share with you one more thing that I did. So I just skipped a few pages and I took a decorative piece like this and a decorative piece like this. And then I just sort of layered it to give it a pretty look on the inside in case you do want to use this as a journal. You still have plenty of writing space because I would not go through and cover every page. I would just take a couple of just strategic pages and add a little something to that page. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to place this right here at the bottom. Y'all see how pretty that is? And then I'll place this piece right there. Then I'm just going to add some tape here. And we'll take this piece and we'll place it right there. Y'all, it's just a little collage page in our beautiful, beautiful notebook. Very easy to make. Y'all, we took a plain old spiral notebook. And yes, we did put a beautiful dress on it. This is absolutely fabulous. This would make a great Mother's Day gift. You could also turn something like this into a bridal planning book. Beautiful, beautiful way for anyone to walk around and take notes. And then we have this pocket here. You can put in a whole bunch of things here and a pocket here, add a whole bunch there. 
but it was super easy to add tabs and give a decorative finish to the pages in your book. And then, then we went in and just added a cute collage page, something you can do on random pages throughout the notebook. But isn't this beautiful and wasn't that easy? Doesn't take a whole lot. We took that notebook and look at it. Just look at how it looks now. I am going to bring that first one back in and I'll show you the collage page that I did in it. Very similar, just simple. And these are absolutely, as my granddaughter Kathleen would say, totes adorbs, Mima. Yes, they are. They are totes adorbs. I absolutely love how these turned out. And y'all, you can make these too. There are so many different materials out there that if you don't have access to this, you can find a substitution. But I hope that you have enjoyed this awesome way that we can take a plain old spiral notebook and turn it into this. If you have, please hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you join the best online crafting family on YouTube. As always, my friends, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.